Try to guess which one of those two following clips is a real drummer and which one is a programmed MIDI drum kit. So today I'll be talking about Get Good Drums. It's a MIDI drum library and I've been using it for almost a year. That's what I've been using in my recent instrumental covers and I've also been using it for writing music and making pre-productions. So going back to those two clips, first one is MIDI drums programmed with Get Good Drums and the second one is also programmed MIDI drums. So as you've probably noticed, you can do a lot of cool stuff with that library and um, it's quite powerful, but it's quite different from those other popular drum libraries like Addictive Drums, Easy Drummer, um, Slate Drums, Power Drum Kit, stuff like that. So I decided to make a video to kind of explain what it is, how it works and how can you use it. So technically it's not a standalone drum library. So in order to get it running you need a separate sampler plugin. Right now it works with Slate Trigger, um, Native Instruments, Contact and Native Instruments Contact Player. Contact Player is free, so that's what I use, but if you happen to have uh, one of other two, you can use them as well. Uh, the conceptual side of it is that you're supposed to treat it like real uh, raw drum recordings you usually get from the studio. So unlike some other libraries I just mentioned, it doesn't come with a ton of huge sounding pre-mixed um, presets. In fact, those samples are pretty much in process, so how you make it sound and how you mix it is completely up to you. If you don't know how to mix or if you don't have a lot of experience with mixing drums, it's not a problem because those samples are quite well engineered and even without any processing it sounds quite good. In fact, the drum parts you hear in my instrumental covers are pretty much unprocessed versions of uh, Get Good Drums. I do use some cues and compression, but nothing drastic. Also, unlike some other drum libraries, it doesn't come with a ton of different uh, drum kits or individual drum to build your virtual drum kit from. It's basically just Matt Halpern's drum kit. It d you do have some options, like I'll show you later in the video, different symbols, stuff like that, but for the most part it's just one drum kit and one drummer. Also, the current version of the library comes with two kind of snapshots. First one, I will refer to it as Great Drums. It's um, it was the samples were recorded for the original version of the Get Good Drums library. And the second snapshot I will refer to it as Orange Drums. Uh, those samples were recorded during Periphery 3 uh, recording session. So the second snapshot, the orange one, I find it sounding a little bit bigger and better, but the grey ones, the old ones, are way more detailed. So you have a so you have a couple of options to choose from. So now let me show you the actual drum kit and what kinds of samples uh, do you get. This isn't a paid review, however Get Good Drums team agreed to provide some discount codes for my subscribers. So if you decide to get a copy of Get Good Drums, just feel free to use this coupon code and save some money. So in order to start using Get Good Drums, you have to first set up your sampler and route it into your door. I'm not going to cover that, there is a already a tutorial by Misha Mansour on Get Good Drums channel. It doesn't matter what kind of door you use, and just follow the steps and you're good to go. Uh, it may take like maybe half an hour, maybe a whole day, depending on how geeky you are, but you only have to do it once and, and after that you can just make a track template or a project template and uh, use it all the time. So now let's see what kind of kit do we have. First of all we have kick drum. You have a couple different options. Uh, you have 22 by 16 and 22 by 20. Um, the second one sounds a little bit more clickier, so you have a couple options to choose from, but other than that, they don't sound like drastically different. And also, you have the same uh, kind of kick drum from the Orange Sessions. Like you see, it sounds completely different. Um, I'm going to assume that uh, in the gray samples, they just used uh, several mics, like two or three, and they mixed them together in one sample. So it sounds more like almost a mixed kick drum. Uh, while with the orange one, it's just one mic. Um, I'm going to assume it that it's kick and mic, so the one that's pointed towards the beat of the drum. So you, 
so with the orange one you have more of a click but you don't have a lot of body so you may want to use uh, an extra sample on top of that or you can just use the gray ones without any sample reinforcements as they are next you have the snare and um, with the snare basically you have just one snare drum but with different uh, tuning options so for example this is medium this is high and this is low tuned snare drum i'm going to assume that these snares are just uh, his uh, 14 by 6 signature mapex snare drum and also you have a couple of different um, snare drums to choose from 13 inch and bfsd like big freaking snare drum or something like that i'm going to assume and uh, you also have a um, kind of the same set of um, pitches for your orange sessions next you have the toms and um, Matt Halpern uses a six-piece drum kit, so four toms. And uh, for each tom you have different um, skin options. So, uh, by the way, you can just preview the sample by just clicking on the picture. Uh, but I'm going to stick with the MIDI controller because my mouse is too clicky and it may annoy you. So, uh, I don't want you to hate my video too soon. So, with toms you have two different... Um, skin types. You have clear and coated. So here's coated, here's clear. Uh, personally, I don't hear a lot of difference between those. Uh, in theory, um, coated is supposed to be more muffled than clear one, uh, but I'm going to assume that uh, in the studio they used a coated one with a little gel on it and a clear one with a lot of gel on it. So in the end they kind of sound the same. Or I'm just deaf, so I don't know. And you also have one option for the orange uh, kit. Uh, one thing to mention, though, is that uh, you can you can hear that all of those all of those three options have the same pitch. So, for example, if you want your toms to be um, tuned to your song's key or something like that, you don't have this option. But you have four toms to choose from, and four toms is uh, usually more than most drummers use, uh, let's admit it. So most drummers use only two or three toms. So if you don't like, for example, that these two toms sound too high, you can just uh, choose another pair for your virtual, like, four-piece drum kit. Uh, so if you're using only two toms in your songwriting or in your uh, production, you can just choose any pair of those four toms uh, that match your song the best. And finally, cymbals. With the cymbals you have uh, your usual metal kind of setup. Two crashes, one right, one hi-hat and one china. And you also have two extra kind of cymbals. One of them is a stack, and if you don't know what a stack is, it's basically when a drummer uses two kind of random symbols on an extra hi-hat stand. Usually like a broken symbols or note symbols he doesn't use anymore, and he get kind of interesting sound, like something between a hi-hat and a splash. So you might find it useful for a certain situation, for certain sound sections, stuff like that. And you also have a splash. So you have an uh, eight-inch splash, you have your six-inch splash, and you also can choose to have a second stack instead of the splash. I'm just going to assume that this is just those two splashes stacked together. One thing to mention, though, is that uh, you probably see that you can kind of combine the orange samples and the gray samples in one drum kit. Uh, but what I've noticed that, uh, for example, I really prefer the orange hi-hat over the grey one. But when I used that orange hi-hat with the rest of the kit being grey, it kind of didn't really sit perfectly with the rest of the kit. It kind of sounded a little bit louder, but it wasn't louder actually. So what I found out that actually those two snapshots, the grey samples and the orange samples, were recorded in different studios. So completely different rooms, different mic sets, different gear, stuff like that. So they may not work together really well. 
you may not notice it you may notice it to the point it drives you crazy so it's up to you but i personally recommend you to stick with only the gray drums in one kit or only the orange drums in one kit in any given session So now let's talk about the minimap so you can get some general idea what kind of samples do you get and what kind of techniques can you emulate with that. Uh, so first you have your regular uh, kick drum hit. And with the kick drum you do have some variety of dynamics. So for example this is a soft hit. And this is a hard hit. So for example if you want to emulate the drop in velocity when a drummer plays a fast a double pedal um, patterns or for example single pedal doubles like that they tend to like drop their velocity a bit and uh, you can emulate that um, next you have something that's called stick click and I had no idea what it is to the point that I just contacted the get good drum support team and asked what the hell it is and apparently that's kind of drum technique when a drummer hits the rim of the kick drum with his stick and along with um, the tom rim hits like this you can hear the drummer of Russian circles for example use this technique a lot in his songs so here's an example So if you're into that, you can program that kind of drum technique if you want. So next you have your snare and uh, with get good drums you don't get a separate kind of MIDI notes for your like a regular snare hit and your rim shot. So the snare hit becomes a rim shot at some kind of, uh, at some value of velocity. So if, for example if you make a note with the uh, maximum velocity it's a rim shot but if you make it softer it sounds like a regular hit so personally I'd prefer to use those as a uh, kind of separate samples uh, but I guess uh, the way they did it uh, makes more sense for metal drum programming so uh, why not so next you have a few different uh, kind of extra snare techniques. So first of all you have flam and if you don't know what a flam is, it's basically when a drummer hits a snare or any other drum with two hands simultaneously but not quite simultaneously. So here's an example. Once upon a time I was somebody else In another life I sold myself away so I tend to use that technique a lot in my drum programming and also in my real drumming. And it's really cool that they have this uh, kind of technique of their separate sample, so you don't have to fake it. Um, next you have your snare rough, it's called. So it sounds quite self-explanatory. And I found it really useful when you're programming uh, ghost notes along with, so you can use this snare rough along with really shallow snare hits and it kind of start to sound quite realistic. And also you can use uh, snare rough, uh, for example, to throw in into some fast drum rolls to kind of make it sound a bit sloppier and more realistic as well. Uh, next you have the, your snare off. And that's basically just the snare without uh, the bottom strings. And you also have your usual uh, side stick. Next you have your toms, uh, so you have, like I mentioned, your uh, rim hits. So they're not tom rim shots, they are just uh, when a drummer hits only the rim and doesn't touch the drum head. And also you have your usual tom hits. And with toms you actually have a lot of dynamics, so you can r do really soft hits like that. and you can increase your velocity so for example if you're doing like a tom build up or if you want to make it sound really um, I don't know, realistic and uh, we can do that so here's an example of 
the tom groove I used in one of my covers. So to my ear it does sound quite realistic. Next you have your hi-hat and as you probably see you have a lot of um, you have a lot of options. So you have your hi-hat completely closed, you have your hi-hat open, you have uh, like separate degrees in between and you have your edge and you have your tip. So you can emulate some intricate hi-hat patterns. Here's an example. So there were a few cases when I tried to program uh, some kind of intricate uh, hi-hat pattern when the drummer uses his left foot a lot. And in a few cases I found that it didn't really sound realistic. Uh, but I'd say in 70 to 90 percent of your real life hi-hat uh, patterns uh, you got it covered. And you also have two kind of um, pedal samples, so when a drummer uses on his foot and doesn't uh, use his stick. So you have something that's called cheek. I assume that's when a drummer just uh, closes the hi-hat with his foot. And also you have ching, which I assume it's that when he closes it and opens right away, so something like that. So that's ching and that's cheek. Uh, that's my assumption, but that's how it sounds to me, at least. Uh, next you have your crashes, so you have two crashes and you have the same amount of um, details for both of them, so I'm going to show one of them. So first you have your normal crash hit. And again with the crash you have a wide range of dynamics, so you can emulate really soft hits like that. Like that. And along with the bell sample uh, you can, for example, emulate when a drummer plays his crashes like a riot. So really soft hits and those bell sounds and those edge sounds. So with that library you can do more than just full-on, uh, you know, crash hits. You can do some intricate and interesting stuff. Um, also you have your crash choke. So basically when a drummer hits the cymbal and chokes it right away. Uh, that's one of the things I do not really like about Get Good Drums because it's just a sample, it's not a MIDI event. So if you, for example, have a situation where you have a final chorus which is really crash heavy and the, then the song kind of ends abruptly so the drummer is supposed to choke them in the end of the last measure, uh, you cannot emulate that. Or for example, if you have a uh, first chorus which is crash heavy and then there is a pause between chorus 1 and verse 2 and um, here's an example so you can hear cymbal kind of sustain tails in this little pause and if you as a songwriter for example want it to be completely quiet you cannot emulate that. Obviously you can do the volume automation, but you cannot emulate the human part of it. So for example, if you want your crash sound uh, like just a quarter note or just an eighth note and, then, and only then choke it, you cannot do that. It's just a uh, really brief hit with a kind of random duration. And last you have your crash swell. So. So, for example, when your song ends and your drummer goes off on your crashes, you can emulate that. So it's really cool that they have it as a separate sample, so you don't have to fake it. I use it sometimes, obviously, uh, mostly in the end of the songs, and uh, you can do that with Get Good Drums. And next you have the right symbol, and if you ask me what's my favorite part about Get Good Drums, I'd say it's the right, because you can get it to sound 100% realistic, at least to my ear. Uh, here's a couple examples.
honestly, I cannot tell if that's a real drummer or if it's a programmed uh, MIDI drums. Obviously, I can because I did program that part, but uh, you get the idea. Uh, so, as for the samples, you have your um, your right tip, your right bell, and you have like two different positions. So you have your center of the bell, you have the edge of the bell, and you have the tip of the right. And um, again, wide range of dynamics. You have really soft hits, you have stronger hits. So first example I showed you was more like heavy uh, right pattern, and the second one was softer, and both of them sound quite authentic. And next you get a right crash as a separate sample. So it's really cool that they made it a separate sample and not like a right tip with the highest velocity. It just gets it out of the way and if you want to use your right like a crash, just use a separate note rather than using the right tip sample with high velocity. Uh, I hope that makes sense to you. Uh, anyway, next you have your china and... Um, you don't have a lot of dynamics with china, but that shine is always loud, so uh, why would you want to have more dynamics? And you also have your China choke, which is the same concept as the uh, crash choke, so it's fixed uh, random duration. And also you have your stack, and since they've used um, the stack on the hi-hat stand, you have two different options. You have Stack loose as when the hi hat is not a hi hat, hi hat stand is open and those two symbols have some space between them. And then you have the stack tight when the hi hat stand is closed. And also you have your splash. Well, it's technically called the accent symbol because you can choose to use the second stack instead of splash, but I just call it splash because. Uh, I don't know, I don't use two stacks in one <laughs> drum kit anyway. So that's it for the MIDI map and one thing to mention though is that you do not get this wide range of um, different hit options with the orange kit. This is only for the grey kit. So for example for the orange kit you don't have this stickle example, you do not have those extra snare hits, uh, you do not get tom rims. Uh, your hi-hat is more basic, I will show you at the end of the video. And also you don't have the crash swells, and maybe something else. So you have less options with the orange kit, so if you're using a really intricate parts, I'd suggest you to use the grey one, but if you just use something simple and straightforward, you can use the orange kit as well. Now let's talk about the mic setup. So with Gecko Drums you get 21 virtual microphones and like I said in the beginning of this video you're kind of supposed to treat them like a uh, real drum recording. So for example in my setup you have uh, I have extra reverb bus for the all the drums because obviously they do not have any built-in plugins. I have some uh, you know EQ and compression on the snare for example so um, you just get the raw microphone tracks and you process them as you would a normal drum recording from the studio. And also obviously you can use some samples on top of Get Good Drums, so that might sound weird because you're using samples on top of samples, but like I said, you treat it like a real drum recording, so why not use some sample reinforcement? One thing that's different between the Get Good Drums and the real drum recording is that you don't have all the drum bleed you get in the real recording. So basically you have all the uh, like all the right type of bleed. For example, you have your snare bleed in the overheads or kick drum bleed in the room mics, stuff like that, but you do not have the cymbal bleed in the tom mics or you don't have like uh, cymbal bleed in the close cymbal mic. So, for example, if you play you some uh, example with the right, oh, there it is. So, in this kind of drum part, you have so you have the rights and in between of crash hits. So, in the real drum recording, if you solo the close mics of the right, um, 
you can hear some uh, cymbal bleeds from the crashes, but in that kind of situation... So in that kind of situation you only hear the right in the close right mic and you don't have any other bleed from any other drums or cymbals. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. So obviously that's not realistic, but it's way easier to work with. And one other thing is that with real drums you usually have to check the phase, for example, between the kick drum, a close mic, and the kick drum in the room mics, or kick drum in the overheads and stuff like that. Uh, because if that's out of phase it kind of sounds weird and teeny. But with Gecko drums it's already taken care of in the production stage, so you don't have to worry about the phase. Everything is already in phase and you don't have to double check it. So now let me walk you through the individual mics. So first you have the kick drum and you only get one track for the kick drum. Uh, it sounds like that. Um, like I said, I don't think that it's just one mic. That's probably just a few mics mixed together in one track. Uh, I do have some processing on the other drums though, but, but not anything crazy. So next you have your snare mics, and with snare you have some kind of interesting setup. Usually with the snare recording you have your snare bottom and snare top mics, but with get good drums, uh, with the way they produce their sample, they have the bottom mic and they actually have two top mics, so I assume one of them is that just a regular top mic position when the mic is uh, pointed toward the center of the snare, but it's uh, like at an angle. And the second drum mic is also pointed toward the center, but it's uh, more at an angle. So let me show you how it sounds. So I'll just bypass all the effects on the snare tracks and show you how it sounds. Um, this is snare top uh, one. And this is that extra snare top mic I was talking about. So I have all the effects bypassing the track and you can hear that it's actually more compressed and more, it sounds bigger. Uh, so you can do a lot of fun stuff with that. And you also have your usual bottom track. Again, no processing, just uh, the raw samples. And here's an example of how all those mics uh, sound together with some processing. So just some EQ and compression, no sample reinforcement or stuff like that. And that's pretty much how you can get it sound with little uh, processing on the bus and the, the individual tracks. Uh, so next you have your toms, and with toms you have your standard uh, just uh, top mic setup. Uh, so just one mic for each tom. Let me show you some example with the tom groove. Yeah, for example like that. So there is some compression on the bus, but other than that, that's just the raw samples. Next you have your cymbals, and on cymbals you have close mics on every cymbal except crashes. So you have close hi-hat mic, close uh, right mic, close china and stack and accent as well. You might not use them, for example, if you're not making any heavy music, if you're making just a pop rock song or something like that. You can just bypass them and use only overheads and room mics for your cymbals. But if you want to bring up some individual cymbals in certain parts of the song, you can obviously use the close mics. So that's up to your mixing techniques and your decisions. One other thing to mention is that you do have those close cymbal mics, but obviously the close cymbal mics uh, sounds quite different from the sound of the cymbal in the overheads. So for example, if you have, um, I don't know, like, um, let's go with the hi-hat. So here's how the hi-hat sounds with a close mic. So 
So that's the close mic of the hi hat, and that's how it sounds in the overheads. So in some cases you might prefer the washy sound of the cymbal in the overhead over the closed cymbal mics and in the real life situation if you want to bring the cymbal up a bit you only have your closed mic and it kind of just uh, changes the tone of the overall sound but with gag drums you actually have some kind of a bit hidden settings actually when you can adjust sounds of each cymbal in the overheads and in the room mics so if you like the sound of certain cymbal in the overheads and you want it to get louder you can just uh, bring up this fader and it will become louder and you don't have to reach for the close mics at all uh, those settings are not automatable so you cannot uh, you know automate the volume across the song but that's i guess too much cheating so uh, why would you use that and what's also interesting about this library is that you actually get two pairs of room mics. So you have your pair of overhead mics, you have your room near and you have your room far. So let me bypass the reverb and all the effects on the tracks and show you how the um, stereo mic sounds. Let's start with the overheads. Now the near room. And then finally the far room mics. So you do have a lot of flexibility here. For example, you can use only near room mics if you want it to sound like it was recorded in a small room or something. Or you can use only far room mics if you want otherwise. Or you can just use both of them. Now it's a good time to talk about the MIDI shenanigans of this library. So it does come with a few MIDI maps. Uh, I'm not sure if some of them match some other drum libraries. Probably not, because as you've seen, this library has quite a unique set of uh, samples and techniques to emulate. And obviously you can make your own MIDI maps. So for example, if you want your old uh, MIDI drum parts that were probably written for some other drum sequences to work with the uh, get drums, you can make your own uh, drum map. Or you can make a drum map to work with the Guitar Pro MIDI files. Or if you play electronic drum kit, you can also use get drums with it. And you don't have to use any crazy MIDI routing, you can just program your own uh, MIDI map that matches your electronic drum kit. So for each sample for each type of hit you can assign up to two different midi notes so it's quite flexible and you also have this velocity curve it basically sets the correlation between the um, velocity value of your midi note and the velocity of your actual uh, drum sample so you might find it useful for example if you're using get good drums with your electronic drum kit to match your dynamics and electronic drum kit sensitivity to the actual um, um, drum sample velocities, so so the dynamics of your playing and the uh, kind of what you hear actually matches. Or, for example, you might uh, use it if you want to emulate like a hard hit and drummer or a soft hit and drummer without uh, messing with the velocities of the actual MIDI file. Uh, you might find it useful too. I never used it, but it's there, so you can find it useful. And now let me show you my own drum map, because there is something that did not make sense to me in the original one, so I tweaked it a little. So first I added this second snare note, and it triggers exactly the same sample as the uh, note in the original mapping, but there are a couple cases in which you might find it useful. First of them, if you want to control the sloppiness of your flam, so for example, if you want it to sound really sloppy, uh, you might instead of using the dedicated flam uh, sample you can just use you can just fake it with two snare hits and it's easier to do when you have uh, two different notes for that and the second case if you want to emulate that a uh, kinds of paradiddle rudiment based snare rolls some drummers do for example Dan from Architects
you might know that each rudiment has its own like vibe, each sound. It's because your left hand and your right hand have different dynamics and slightly different tones. So uh, that's what I'm trying to emulate in this following example. So as you see, I kind of used this extra MIDI note to emulate the right hand and I assigned the different velocity level to its hand and it's easier to control that way than for example if you have um, all snare hits and assigned to one note. With the toms I completely changed the layout because as you probably remember with the original MIDI map the higher sounding toms were assigned to a low notes and the lower sounding toms were assigned to higher notes that did not make sense to me. So I just reversed them and also I've replaced those uh, rim samples with uh, duplicated tom samples. So again those two notes trigger the same sample but that way I can do flams on toms as well. Like that. Uh, next the hi-hat. Um, I didn't change anything about the hi-hat layout. However I made a separate note label file for the orange hi-hat because since it's less detailed you don't have all of those kinds of hits with the orange hi-hat so in fact uh, that's what you get only so it was kind of hard to remember which ones are available because there are a lot of them so I just made a separate file and um, the last thing I moved those um, crash swells away because uh, when you usually program drums you might find yourself dragging the note across the MIDI piano roll so for example if you want to drag a note from the I don't know like left crash to right crash it kind of always triggers this long swell sample and that's super annoying so I just decided to move them away so they do not annoy the hell out of me so if you want uh, my drum map, it will be in the files below, so I'll have the files with note names uh, for Reaper's uh, MIDI editor, if you use Reaper, for the default helper and my own um, drum map, and I also have my own drum map file uh, there as well. So if you need them, they will be in the description. So there we have it. I think it's a good tool for songwriting as well as pre-productions and home-produced music. You can get it to sound quite realistic and also gives you the opportunity to incorporate a good amount of different drum techniques into your drum parts to make them sound even more interesting. So if you want to get a copy of Get Good Drums um, and if you are subscribed to my channel you can get a discount, just use the coupon code. And um, if you know someone who might find this video useful just share it with him or her. And yeah, thanks for watching, thanks to Get Good Drums team for making such a great product and see you in the next video. Cheers!